When introducing DAS or distributed antenna systems, we need to think what is the what is the requirement for a DAS system. Now the best way to do this is sort of visually to start with. So in this example, you can see that I've got an area, I've got some buildings highlighted on this particular plot. Again, we're using a, a planning software from a Cloud RF for this particular example, and it's got some capabilities with respect to looking at clutter and building penetration and things like that. But as you can see visually, I've got this omnidirectional transmitter at a certain height, certain technology, certain power level, and it's outside. And it's quite obvious in the visual aspect that you can see that where there is open space towards me, the radio is propagating quite freely. When it hits a building, then we have certain issues. And you can see just by focusing a little bit on here uh, towards this main building that we do get some coverage and again it's predicting a certain amount of signal level going into that particular building however it does depend on the exact building its materials uh, and the frequency of operation will have a big impact on obviously how much signal actually actually goes into that particular building but you can see the issue we are facing, that we're facing issues where if somebody was in that building trying to utilize this outdoor macro cell, this umbrella cell effectively, we may have certain issues in trying to connect. And this is where DAS systems come in. Now, what DAS systems are is a whole solution to do with certain use cases, for example, covering a building. We'll look at other use cases later. But we need to think about you know, the building, the losses in that building, and how to counteract and provide coverage within this particular building in this example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over and say, well, let's put a, a transmitter in the building, and which effectively is what DAS does. A, a distributed antenna system puts the antenna in the building, so therefore that's where the transmitter is. So the key thing is this is a low power indoor transmitter. So it's low power, but it's doing a better job than the outdoor cell. And that's, a, again, a key aspect. But again, the software doesn't know exactly the internal make, makeup of the, of the building. And therefore, it's just assuming that it's omnidirectional. It's going equally well in all directions. Later on, we'll, we'll identify that that's not typically the case. It depends on the internal workings, if you like, and the, the architecture of the building. Is it a single story, multi-story, internal buildings, objects within the building? All will factor into that, com uh, if you like, that discussion. Now, the purpose of DAS systems is so that the devices are not trying to use these outdoor antennas to provide that connectivity. Um, and again, there's various advantages of that, which we're going to be talking about a little bit later. But we then are saying, yes, with a internal system, we could again put multiple transmitters. I've only put one here just to visualize, but what we need to do is think about planning the internal architecture, picking a suitable frequency, thinking about the coverage, thinking about the capacity. There are many DAS use cases or scenarios where you could utilize a distributed antenna system. So let's have a look at some of those use cases and expand the sort of that scope effectively of where a DAS system can be used. Now it's worth pointing out DAS systems cost money, so you've got to think about you know the, the cost benefit of deploying a DAS system. One area that you will see a lot of DAS systems is when you start looking at very large buildings uh, or venue sites where again there's a lot of people going and they're they typically obviously are going to be using their mobile phones. We need to then think about providing better coverage. So, for example, at a concert hall, a stadium, for example, is a good example of where you might need some form of DAS systems. Again, it might be a combination of DAS and other things, depending again on the actual venue or the building, etc. But that's one key use case. Another option is tunnels now this particular tunnel is a car so it's again it's for vehicles now normally uh, outdoor cells potentially can be used to point at the, the the entrance and the exit of the tunnel 
and those radio signals propagate into the tunnel quite well. However, they don't go that far into the tunnel. And what you might find is for some countries where you've got very long tunnels, the signal could effectively uh, over time attenuate and therefore you drop the connection. If you wanted to maintain calls whilst in the tunnel, we have to come up with some sort of solution and that solution can include a, a DAS solution, a distributed antenna system where we, we place antennas, transmitters, effectively DAS nodes, you know, throughout the tunnel length, which means we can obviously facilitate that connectivity. There are other methods, so it doesn't have to be a DAS system, but there's one use case. Other areas are where there may be no uh, external outdoor coverage, for example, underground generally, you could say, yes, if we go into an underground system, we typically have no cellular coverage. Now you might say, well, I've gone into certain underground stations and I've got cellular coverage. And that might be a little bit of the outdoor cell coming down, or we have a DAS solution. Now that DAS solution might have transmitter nodes. We can also use uh, in the underground and in tunnels, things called leaky feeders. So the actual, the transmitter isn't just a, a, a single point and act like a, a a little bit like your access point at home it's not just a single point it's using a effectively a leaky feeder cable so the idea is it provides a sort of more seamless coverage for the the length of the the underground station or going down the steps towards the underground or as you're driving through the tunnel in the previous example so the idea is still potentially managed by a, a DAS a distributed antenna system now, I mentioned large buildings. There's also lots of other use cases, other in-building coverage, and that might be related to things like hospitals, airports, where you need provide connectivity. And that might be for the public, but it could also be for specific sort of use cases, private networks, public safety networks, etc. So there's a whole combination of different scenarios and use cases which are applicable to DAS. Some of the key challenges, though, will be related to, well, here's a DAS system uh, within this country. We might have maybe four or five service providers. So who's allowed to use this DAS system? Now, in some cases, the DAS system might belong to one of the service providers, and that's the only one that is actually transmitting in that building. In other cases, the DAS system might be uh, sort of neutral host type uh, solutions where, again, all of the service providers are able to feed into that solution. There are many benefits of using a DAS system. So the most obvious benefit is improved network coverage. You know, providing connectivity in areas where potentially you might not be getting connectivity from an external cell site. You know, so tick, tick that box, definitely. Now, with that improved connectivity indoors, what we also can say is, by definition, the device is now utilising a, a better link. So from a device to the, the DAS node in the building is better, but we still have to get from that DAS node out towards the core network and there's different methods to do that and we're going to talk about those in other videos however the link characteristics should be better for the device in so doing you should get a better level of service however uh, it's also worth pointing out the fact that the indoor user is now using the DAS system we also enhance the capacity of the potentially the out, outdoor cell as well. Again, that's going to be covered off later in, in subsequent videos explaining why that's, the, why that's the case. One key thing is the flexibility and scalability of DAS solutions. So a DAS solution might have maybe three or four nodes, which is covering a particular office, providing that indoor connectivity on a proprietary solution. However, it could scale up to be a full uh, venue site, which might be a, a sort of um, a sporting event or a, a concert hall, things like that, where it's, it's now we're now talking about thousands and tens of thousands of users potentially uh, utilizing this distributed antenna system. So it's very scalable. It's also very flexible because we can position these DADS nodes where the users are. And in, in addition to the rooms where they are, for example, if it was a stadium, you might have then certain um, uh, 
uh, corridors, under underground um, tunnels, for example, for, for servicing and various other aspects. Again, we could put the, the, the system in there as well. Overall, it's going to give you a better user experience. Now, these are some of the benefits. Now, therefore, what is the disadvantage? Well, the disadvantage usually is an element of cost. Uh, so, you know, we do have to buy the equipment, plan the equipment, install the equipment. We also have challenges, which is related to, you know, are we allowed to put this equipment into this building? Who owns this equipment? Who owns the building? Um, which service providers are going to be utilizing this DAS system? So yes, we've got lots of benefits, but we also need to think about some of the challenges a little bit later on as well. When looking at DAS systems, we need to think a little bit of some of the, uh, the considerations that we have when designing the system. Uh, and, and starting that sort of route and say, well, what is, this, what is the DAS system? So to start with, it's worth pointing out that we do need a, a lot of detail about the actual the solution, the use case, the building, the surveying of that particular area. And typically that involves getting 3D uh, computer-aided design CAD models of that particular building or that, you know, that, that venue or, the, or the, uh, the tunnel, for example, so that we can better predict how the radio is going to be propagating through those environments. And that includes surveying materials, possibly a bit of testing as well, so how frequencies are going through different parts of the, uh, the, the building, for example. So very key, important stage to start with. But also that will involve thinking about how we're going to feed the DAS system. And again, this is all about the, the, the signal source for a DAS system. And it could come, uh, for example, um, on air through the radio environment, or it could be based on a copper fiber connection. Um, so we need to think about the, you know, the connectivity side of things. When looking at the solution overall, we need to look at the, the requirements in terms of the coverage, the signal levels, uh, what percentage of the, the actual area that we, we need to actually achieve. So usually you'll quote things like 95% of the building needs to have a certain level of signal and a, and a certain capability. But we also need to think about the capacity. What is the, the uh, uh, utilization we expect? How many users, especially at the peak time? So if it was like a venue, and it, which was related to a sporting event, you know, you are planning for when it's at its at its highest load. So therefore, you need to be able to manage that as a service. So we've got to have that as a consideration. What technologies, frequency bands are going to be put into the DAS system? Now, in a lot of cases, DAS systems are uh, neutral when it comes to the service provider. So therefore, they need to be able to operate over lots of different frequency bands and technologies possibly 4g and 5g for example so we need to put that into the design later on in other videos we're going to be going into what we mean by DAS types and you'll hear things like passive DAS, active DAS, hybrid DAS, digital DAS there's different types of distributed antenna systems and we need to say well based on the solution you know, which one are we going with? And that might be linked into the next topic, which is like the vendor. So certain vendors have certain solutions and that might be your preferred option. We use this vendor and it uses this DAS type and this type of equipment. And therefore this is the solution we're gonna, gonna utilize. But that selection of vendor might also be related to the use case. So if it was a, a big stadium venue, you might be using one vendor, but if it's a small building solution, you might be using a different vendor, again, depending on the scalability required. We do need to factor in any regulations in country. So that is to do with retransmitting the, uh, the cellular RF signals. And if, is there any uh, legal requirements, any regulations we have to adhere to? Any health and safety aspects all needs to be factored in as well, because again, we will have RF signals being, being transmitted within the building, within the, the different use cases. And then finally, when designing these systems, it's always very important to think about, will there be any delta, any change? So for example, here's one uh, example, you know, a lot of DAS systems were deployed over the last 10 years, let's say, originally focusing on technologies 
such as 4G. Now 5G is coming along. 5G has the ability to go into a lot higher frequencies as well what we call high band signals, we'll cover those off a little bit later, but you'll find a lot of the existing DAS solutions might not be able to support those high high bands, in which case we're going to go have to go back and potentially redesign the system. Or we just leave it as it is and say it's not going to utilise this, this high band technology. So if we're deploying DAS systems today, we need to think about should we be making sure that we're ticking the boxes for any future requirements. And that might be to do with the technology changing, but it could also be with respect to the scalability and the uh, the, the use case uh, changing potentially as well. Do we need to build in a bit of a buffer into the design so that we don't have to go and again uh, alter that design later on uh, once it's live effectively. So these are some of the design considerations that we, we need to think about when designing a, a DAS, a distributed antenna system.